you guys do this thing. Listen, okay, just hear me out, all right? And okay, women, you should Venmo me money for this after the show. When, oh, whenever we say I'm about to come, you guys, you lose your minds. You short, you short circuit, you get so excited and you fuck it up immediately. It is so, we, you'll be doing so, you don't even know you're doing good. You're half asleep, you're checked out, you're dissociated, okay? But you're keeping a tempo going. You're keeping a set, just And we're like, okay, all right, yep. Keep on like this and I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell him, I can tell him. I'm gonna tell him. Same to tell. I'm gonna tell him. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna come. You guys are like, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then I'm Did you? Did you come? No. Don't look at your fucking girlfriend like that. That's how it pertains to every one of you. Another nemesis in life is my teenage cousin. I don't like him at all. I think he's a horrible person, and I hope he doesn't get into college. <laughs> if one of y'all was whooping his ass right now, I'd let you get four more hits in before I stop. You're like, hey, 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 get off my cousin, man. <laughs> he always talks trash about my comedy. Hey, Hannibal, we're watching you stand up on y'all talk. It wasn't funny, man. <laughs> so I had to figure out what can I say back to this 17-year-old boy that'll destroy him because I'm not letting this slide. I'm very petty. And I figured it out, and I just accused him of masturbating because teenagers can't handle that. Their psyches are weak. So I say, what, man? You coming from jagging off? Said, no, I wasn't jagging off, Hannibal! Why would you say that? Do not jag off. I will never jag off. Get out of here, Hannibal! Why you want me to get out of here so you could jag off? No! So my name is Aaron. That's my name, Aaron. But if I have to give my name at a restaurant or like a Starbucks, I always give a fake name. I always say Doug. I don't know if I look like a Doug. Right. That's not even why I do it. I say Aaron wrong, I think. I have to repeat Aaron every time. Every time I say Aaron, they're like, Eric? It never happens with Doug. I'm batting a thousand with Doug, man. I've said Doug a million times. They're never like, Trug? You know, so it's the only name that sounds like Doug. I was at a sandwich shop in Iowa not long ago. The cashier is very friendly. She goes, can I get a name for your order? I don't even think anymore. That's how often I lie. I go, yeah, my name's Doug. She was like, oh, you have an accent. Where are you from? I said, I'm from Alabama, which is true. I grew up in Alabama. I've lived in Tennessee for 15 years now, but she didn't ask for my whole life story. So I'll just give her the bullet points, right? I'm Doug from Alabama. That's who I am in this sandwich shop. So. We start chatting, and listen, I'm married. We weren't flirting. There was friendship in the air. Do you know what I mean? I was killing it, to be honest with you. You ever bond with a stranger you'll never see ever again in your life? It's fun. We talked about life and love and happiness. We connected, right? So I get to the end. She's made my sandwich, and she goes, Hey, Doug, I enjoyed chatting with you today. And I was like, wow, I enjoyed chatting with you. She goes, whenever you're ready, it's $9.18. I said, great. I pull out my credit card. <laughs> Apparently, y'all's works the same way mine does. Has my legal name on the front, which is not Doug. It's Aaron Weber. She goes, well, you told me your name was Doug. I go, well, it's, it's my middle name. <laughs> and I just go by Doug, but my middle name's Doug. She was like, your middle name's Doug? Your card says Aaron J. Weber on it. I was like, oh yeah, my mom spelled it wrong on the birth certificate, you know. We are from Alabama, you know. Can't spell down there. I'm Jadug, technically. That's what my family calls me. I won't tell you the whole story, but I'm Jadug. She was like, okay, Jadug, do you have an ID on you with the same name as this? I can't just swipe this card with a different name. Do you have an ID? Oh yeah, I got you. I take out my driver's license, which I realize is a Tennessee driver's license. I mean, my entire life story collapsed in five seconds. I'm a totally different person. When I walked in, I was Doug from Alabama, right? Now I'm Aaron from Tennessee, a pathological liar. These days, I've just had to lower my expectations in a man. I only look for one thing in guys. They just have to have a sense of humor about their enormous cock. A lot 
lot of people, a lot of people say, <laughs> you got an enormous cock? Is that why you're laughing? <laughs> I'm like, I get it. They're funny. You know, my agent would call me and she's like, uh, Wanda, you don't even want to hear this. I was like, no, tell me, what is it? She's like, all right. They want you to play a maid. And you win the lottery. But you love working for this family so much. You continue to be their maid. I said, set it up. I want to meet these people so I can slap that dumb ass idea right out their head. What, what makes you think people want to work for you like that? That's ridiculous. I'm gonna tell you right now, somebody walked in here and told me I just won the lottery, I will walk out in the middle of this joke. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? You know, we still can't prevent a hangover. We have all this medical research. I've tried the water, I've tried the pills, nothing works. We can prevent children. <laughs> right? We can't prevent a hangover, you know? At least some people want kids. I've never woken up like, ooh, I am really hungover, but you know what? I think I want to keep it. <laughs> yeah, I got to cut back on the sauce, man. I, uh, I blacked out last week. That's embarrassing. I'm too old for that. I told my roommate, he's like, oh, you blacked out? Ugh. That means you forgot to brush your teeth last night. <laughs> I was like, wow, that is the least of my worries. <laughs> I'm more concerned with the lipstick I'm wearing. Why sent my mom a dick pic? <laughs> yeah, she was like, ah, oh, family plan. <laughs> yeah, As a... Uh professional homosexual. I've been trying to figure out what is the gayest thing in the entire world. I've done my field research and I've come to the conclusion that straight men that refuse to eat pussy are the gayest thing in the entire world. Why do you exist? Who are you for? <laughs> Why can't they never keep it a secret? They always brag about it. They just show up to parties and go, I don't eat pussy. And then they leave. I think everyone should be in therapy, especially more men need to be in therapy. Yes, 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 yes. But they're very reluctant. Men are very reluctant. My, my best friend, his name is Josh. He's my age, he just went through a second divorce. He's been very depressed. And I told him, I was like, you should go to therapy. And he was like, nah. Running. <laughs> Running. That's my therapy. And I was like, oh, that's so interesting because sushi, that's my haircut. What the fuck are you talking about? Wouldn't that be great if aliens came to this planet and they were black? <laughs> and they got here and they were like, yo, we so happy we found this planet because we left all these black people here came to get them, bring them back home to their home planet. Planet Black Black. <laughs> but you pronounce it Black Black. <laughs> All the black people over here be like, yeah, we want to go back home to the planet Black Black. <laughs> go to Africa and talk to the Africans and the Africans are like, come on, come on, I see the man. <laughs> we are going to come as well. <laughs> No more black people <laughs> on the planet. Fat white girls be crying. Oh my God, oh no, get off of me. Deontay. <laughs> Today in sports, the New York Knicks beat the Boston Celtics 15-13 in an overtime nail battle. And in tragic sporting news, there will be no NFL. We loved Hooters because they had amazing chicken wings and they were cheap. And we were fat and poor, so it was awesome. When my mom was dating this, this guy, uh, I remember one time uh, we were trying to figure out where to go eat one night. And uh, I was like, oh, well, let's, let's just go to Hooters. And he was standing right here beside her. And my mom, out of nowhere, she's like, I have never <laughs> eaten at Hooters. <laughs> Oh. My baby 
Hooter was a Hooters waitress. No. No. I was like, you hired two Hooters waitresses to hula hoop for my brother's 18th birthday party. I have no, those were just two girls that love to hula hoop. I have never been to Hooters. Somebody named Jack want to be called Jill. You can't do that. Meanwhile, half your favorite entertainers been performing under a fake name. You ain't had no problems with that. <laughs> I ain't finna call you Jill. Meanwhile, you, you, think, you, think, you think Ice Cube is his real name? <laughs> really? Or maybe he just gave you a name he wanted to be called? Maybe. Just maybe. Hulk Hogan's real name is Terry. Let that sink in while you refuse to call a trans person what they want to be called. This sweaty ass Hulkamania, Hulk fucking Hollywood Hogan is a nigga from Tampa named Terry. You know when your ex starts fucking other people the same way you know when something touches your foot in the ocean. Right? You just get this feeling, you're like, I can't see it, but something invaded my space. All my girlfriends were like, no, 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 you need proof of something like that. That's, I was like, I don't need proof. I'm a woman. We were all witches once. <laughs> like, you want proof? My pussy twitched in the middle of the night. <laughs> I woke up and I knew. That's my fucking proof. I called him up. I was like, I know what the fuck you're up to. <laughs> he was like, how would you know that? I was like, you've been sleeping with me for five years. There is so much of your DNA inside my body, I will never not know where the fuck you are. I was like, we're twins now. I like pot a lot because I love to be terrified and hungry at the same time. And I can't figure out another way to get there, so. I was thinking about quitting smoking pot this year, and then I was like, wait a second, what if I just start smoking way more? And my life got a lot better, so it turns out I just wasn't taking enough. I like pot because you can work high. Did you guys know that? You can go to work high. It's great. And here's the secret about it. If you go to work high, you didn't really go to work, did you? They even each other out, you just hung out someplace. People are like, what'd you do today? You're like, hung out. They're like, where'd you hang out? You're like, Merrill Lynch Investment Services? I don't like when people say they want the old Kanye back. I've been a Kanye fan my whole life. Nigga, the same Kanye? He's been crazy the whole time. You think that shit was normal when the prime of his career with everything to lose, he went on live TV and said George Bush doesn't care about black people? That's some crazy ass behavior. He wants to run for president. That's a lot. I'll admit, that's a lot. Yeah. I'm gonna vote for him, but that's a lot. <laughs> I am, I'm gonna vote for him. I have two reasons. The first reason is just my favorite rapper, simple. You know? <laughs> like, I like Joe Biden, but he's never made me dance. <laughs> the second reason, more important, I think he's the black president white America deserves. <laughs> that's right. We gave white people Obama and they didn't get their act together. Kanye. <laughs> People talk about privilege. All privilege is the ability to be mediocre, that's all. Trump wasn't the first shitty white president we had. We had so many, and we took him in stride. I want a shitty black president. <laughs> Nigga, that's equality. Everybody's like, I'm not racist, I voted for Obama. Nigga, vote for Kanye. <laughs> Voting for Obama doesn't mean you're not racist. It means you're not dumb. It was an easy pick, okay? Obama is the presidency, but Lil Wayne is to rap. You know what I mean by that? <laughs> you ever see Lil Wayne? You're like, well, of course he's a rapper. What the fuck else would you <laughs> Never gonna walk into a bank and Lil Wayne approves you on a loan. <laughs> it's cash money, baby. No. <laughs> <laughs> I 
<laughs> Martin had a dream, this is my dream. I want Kanye to fuck this country up. <laughs> I do. I want him to reconcile with Kim. That's right, First Lady Kardashian. In the Oval Office, not get shit over on the desk with her fake butt. I want there to be like a nuclear fallout and Kanye West has to address the nation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're all glued to our TV screens. Nervous as a country, we need a leader. And they're like, now President Ye. <laughs> He comes out in a red blazer with his chest hair showing. Freshest pair of Yeezy slides you've ever seen. He's got the Yeezy mask covering his face. Walks right up to the podium. I am a god! I'd be at home like, fuck yeah, Kanye. Ruin this country. I've been working on this Kanye for president joke for his taping, and you guys liked it, but this crowd one night, they loved it. They went crazy for it. They fucking loved it. And this one lady in the back stood up at the end of the joke, and she was like, stop laughing! Stop! It's not funny! <laughs> and everybody was like, fuck, I'm about to lose my job, nigga. <laughs> and she pointed at me. She pointed at me. In the middle of the crowd, she pointed out. She was like, how could you vote for someone who said anti-Semitic things? Yeah, and I said, bitch, this is a joke. <laughs> I would never vote for Kanye West. He's my favorite rapper. I trust him with beats, not the button. You know what I mean? So I am disabled. Um, don't worry, you're going to be okay. <laughs> Lock the doors. I know, I know, I know, I know. I know. So hard. I'm like half and half. I'm not like totally committed <laughs> to the lifestyle. <laughs> I'm like the bisexuality of a building. <laughs> Bi old. Bi old. So, so you know, a lot of people they look at me and they they think that I suffer from cerebral palsy, uh, which. I, I don't, I, I have cerebral palsy. I suffer from people. I was looking in this mirror and I was being so mean and so, so self-critical, okay? And it's in this busy restaurant and then this man, total stranger, walks by, stops, sees me and goes, you would look way prettier if you didn't wear glasses, you wore makeup and high heels. And then just walks away, okay? And I was like, whoa, this is so much sexism coming at one. Like, I didn't know what to do with myself. There's a man telling a woman how to dress. I was so weirded out, okay? But then, plot twist, I saw the same man later that night kissing another man. <laughs> and then everything changed. <laughs> I was like, is he a gay sexist or the fairy godmother I never knew I was? what I'm selling, he's not buying, okay? So his advice was coming from a pure place. You know what I mean? Untouched, really. I think he walked by, saw me, and was like, girl, you have so much potential, you don't even realize, and then just walked off, you know? What I'm saying is, it was a drive-by queer eye. That's really what it was. I was like, hey man, if you learn how to use the potty, I'll take you to Disneyland to meet Mickey Mouse. And he did it, and we went. And we waited in line at Mickey's house for like three hours. But it was worth it, because when it was my son's turn, he walks right up to Mickey all confidently, and he's like, hey, my name's Eamon, and I poop in the potty. <laughs> and let me tell you something, Mickey went nuts. Mickey was just like, yes! He was smacking his own ass for some reason. He made my son feel so good. And we're walking away, I'll never forget this, we're walking away and my son looks up at me and he just goes, man, I feel like Mickey like really likes me. Like he like really, 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 really likes me. And it took everything inside of me not to be like, dude, he doesn't actually like you. It's just his job to make you feel special. And that's when I realized that Disneyland characters are just strippers for kids. <laughs> Oh, you must be so glad to be in New York. The South is so racist. The South is so racist. Ah! 
Oh, you mean the part of the South that starts in Canada and ends at Mexico? <laughs> Find me a part of America that's not racist. I'll move today. I'll wait. I know the North is more racist because in the North they split up white folks. They got Italian neighborhoods, Irish neighborhoods. I live in a Greek neighborhood. You know what Irish and Italian and Greek is in the South? White! <laughs> Nobody has time to break down your brand of whiteness, okay? I don't care what flag your Caucasian flies under, Brandon. I like to say two things when I get started. First things first, I'm transgender. That's right, and if you can't tell it means the pills are working and I'm getting my money's worth, you understand? This shit ain't cheap. Second thing, no, I don't like the word tranny. No, I don't like the word tranny. You see, it's a porn term. White friends, you wouldn't introduce your black friend Keisha as your ebony friend Keisha, would you? That's right, you'd be telling on yourself and shit. No, I don't like the word tranny. You see, I much prefer build a bitch. I'm a build a bitch. Because I get to put my parts together, you know what I mean? Every time I say I'm transgender, it never fails on stage. I feel my crotch get hot. People get to staring at my crotch area, trying to see if they can find the print. But I'm Houdini with the dick. You're not gonna find the dick, you understand? My guy friends always asking me dumb questions. Say, Fox, how do you tuck it? I give him a dumb answer, because I hate that question. I say, easy. What I do is I tie this motherfucker to a brick. I throw it through my legs real hard, let it come over my shoulder and click it like a seatbelt. I don't know if you saw this story. There's a group of Girl Scouts that were outside of a dispensary in Chicago selling Girl Scout cookies. And what hustlers, you know? Like, it, we've come full circle as a society, because it used to be that kids would walk out of a store and an adult was trying to sell them weed. Now adults are walking out of dispensaries and there's kids like, hey! You hungry? Everybody get hungry. <laughs> you don't want none of this? I got that damn man. I got that samosa. I got that praline. I got that mango cream. I got that shortbread. I don't know where I fit in, but I, I really don't. Like, I can't even hang out with my thug friends anymore. Because we'll be smoking together, and then they like to say cool thug shit, but it'll also hurt my feelings a lot of the time. <laughs> They get real dramatic when they hit the joint and be like, man, dog, you know, when I think about it, all my real friends are either dead or in jail by now. I'm like, give me back my weed, man. Changing my Hulu password, too. That's for my real friends. I go into the bathroom of this hotel, and this is what I find. Um, this is the soap with which I am to wash all of my flesh. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> you don't see my problem. I Googled my high school arch nemesis the other day. We all do it. You Google people you used to hate to see if their lives suck now, right? I Googled my high school arch nemesis and the first result was a mugshot and it made my day. It made me very happy. <laughs> I was just hoping she was fat now too, but prison, like, wow. <laughs> Beyond my wildest dreams. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I'm petty and I'm filled with hate. I hold grudges forever. And when you're a grudge holder, people will tell you, you got to release that negative energy. You don't want to be carrying around that negative energy. Uh, I do, it brings me joy. Um, <laughs> like if I thought I could earn a living holding grudges, I would quit comedy. I would run out off of space and open up my own little grudgery. I would just sit in there. <laughs> Every day from nine to five, I would hold them. I probably wouldn't even take lunch breaks because the hate would fill me up on the inside. <laughs> I would take over other people's grudges. That's how much I enjoy it. Like, 
Just come into my grudgery, give me some money, and tell me the backstory. You know what I'm saying? Just have a seat. Now, what did this bitch do to us? Like, you know? Man, you guys do this thing. Listen, okay, just hear me out, all right? And, okay, women, you should Venmo me money for this after the show. When, oh, whenever we say I'm about to come, you guys, you lose your minds. You short, you short circuit, you get so excited, and you fuck it up immediately. It is so, we, you'll be doing so, you don't even know you're doing good. You're half asleep, you're checked out, you're dissociated, okay? But you're keeping a tempo going, you're keeping a set, just And we're like, okay, all right, yeah. Keep on like this, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell him, I can tell him. I'm gonna tell him. Same to tell. I'm gonna tell him. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna come. You guys are like, okay, but I'm not, but I'm not. Did you? Did you come? No. Don't look at your fucking girlfriend like that. That's how it pertains to every one of you. 